Jamie. You've grown from blogging to businesses, influencer marketing to hashtag legal. How did you know it was time to scale at each of these milestones? Um, I knew too late, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I got, we realized we needed to hire, and then the piece of advice that I give is the minute you think you need to hire, and then when you pause and say, no, nah, I'm not ready, that's when you hire, <laughs> and we paused. So um, the minute I knew I had the opportunity and I should have hired is when that happened. Um, and it's when I just started to feel that overwhelm, too much work, not enough time. Um, and so for us, we're completely virtual, which is a little bit different than um, some other people on the panel. So I have staff all over the country and we look for, we look for, we started with just an assistant to like an, an, who ended up becoming our business manager. So we did something very similar where she started off small, we realized she was amazing, and she grew into something bigger. And so she helped us with processes, and I think that that, for us and our business, because we're a service-based business, was huge. Because our processes for us is what sort of dragged us down. Because um, the least efficient you are with your processes, the longer things take, the harder it is to get things done. Um, so that's how we knew. It was the discomfort. <laughs> Thank you. Christina, you now have five childcare locations around northern New Jersey. How did you determine your first location? And what were the levers that triggered you for each of your expansions? That's a great question. Um, the first location, to be honest, I kind of fell into it. Um, there's strict honesty here. Because we, it, the first location in Lindhurst is a very small center. There's only about 30 to 35 children, license capacity. is actually um, a small house that we rent from the church. Um, so, um, so I kind of found it because we were looking to purchase a childcare center to, you know, to kind of start my own, because I was teaching for a while in early education. And we found it on Craigslist. So, <laughs> word of advice, if I saw a list of business on Craigslist for sale, be careful. <laughs> and, uh, so, so, yeah, so I spoke to this lady, and, um, and she was okay, a little interesting. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I need to speak to the landlord to make sure you know, they're okay with this transaction. And I did, and the landlord made me aware that she was like eight months behind in rent. Mm -hmm. um, and they were in the process of evicting her and putting a lien on everything. And I was like, okay. I probably should not go into business with this woman. <laughs> so we backed out of the deal, and I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna touch you out with the 10-foot pole. And then like, I think it was like about a year or so later, um, the landlord the church had my contact. They had infected her um, after a long time. So they're like, well, the space is empty. We are looking for a new tenant. Would you like to take over? I was like, sure. So we fell into it. And I thought that was gonna be one, it is gonna be my little, you know, my baby. And, um, and it was fun, it was a great experience. I was director, teacher, um, you know everything and then like three years down the road we had parents asking like when are you going to open another one when are you going to open here because we're moving there <laughs> so, so um so we kind of were like okay maybe a second location might be a good idea I'm like okay second and then that's it we end up in East Hanover um, because of another deal that a broker bought us so it's a nice location I grew up in Morris County it was very familiar and then um, a couple years later we were thinking about having a baby ourselves and we lived in Jersey City at the time and I wasn't going to drive my baby to East Hanover because it's a long drive and it turned out to be a good idea because my daughter actually gets car sick which I didn't know <laughs> so um, so we're looking for sites in Jersey City nothing came up and then Hoboken you know found a location so we actually migrated to Hoboken because of the center that we opened and it kind of just happened organically. In Harrison, now we're kind of we're kind of a almost like a corporation business, right? We're a little bit more established, and so um, so now we're kind of following the path of public transit, you know, locations and commuter towns, and really, you know, just thinking about who we are as parents and where we we, we want to live. We don't want to commute. We don't ever want to move out of Hoboken, and then we do have to move to Hobo out of Hoboken. We're like, okay, do we move out further to like Jersey City, Harrison, Montclair, and then you get further, further out, more space to need. Right now, we only made it to Harrison, Lindhurst, and East Hanover. East Hanover is a decent. Yeah, but that's our second location because we started yeah. out in the burbs, and then we moved to back to the city area because we live here and we need a childcare for our own daughter. <laughs> <laughs> if you need childcare, open a childcare center. <laughs> Okay, um, Emily, I'm early on in the wholesale process for retail. What's the most important thing 
for someone to know that's entering that space. Mm -hmm. Just, no, it's big just on the selling to retail? Yeah. I think about it's finding good people. Like it's either finding a really strong like independent sales rep or finding an amazing showroom that you know really will nurture you and like take you in and take care of you because there's so many bad reps in showrooms in, in our industry. A lot of them just want, you know, your rent, their rent paid. So you really have to go in there and forge that relationship and keep at it. And if you're not on them every day, that that's just, that's the key. When I started out my first company, I gave them my collection and I was like, okay, they're salespeople, they're gonna sell it, right? I made the product, they're gonna sell it. Did not happen. Month after month, I'm paying rent, 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 and nothing. So finally, I was like, I asked my friends, like, who do, how do I sell? How do I do this? Like, I don't understand. They're like, showrooms, you can't trust them in this industry. You have to do it yourself. So I, that's what I did. I went door to door. And when I went door to door, I built up that base myself. And then I was able to take it to a showroom and be like, look, I have 50 doors. Mm -hmm. I did it by myself. Mm -hmm. So then they took me in. So I think it starts from finding good people and doing the hard work yourself from the start. Yeah. Okay. I'm waiting a little bit. <laughs> you have a lot on your plate. <laughs> okay. Clemence, your newest location opened last month in the Hudson T building, and you now have four locations within Jersey City and Hoboken. How did you decide on the locations for each of your bakeries? It's a little bit like uh, <clears throat> Christina. It's, it's almost like they chose me. <laughs> no, seriously. So the first one was a uh, hard work, say, back up and down and yes, I found something, and you negotiated these, and then you realize it's not going to work out for lots of different reasons. You cannot work with that person. And then, so a lot of ups and downs for the, for the first one. So on, on First Street, it was uh, after uh, accepting to go outside of a deal and losing quite a bit of money that I was pushing my sweater up First Street, and then I saw for rent. What? <laughs> in a soccer shop? What? <laughs> so that's how it started. And then Jersey City came like on a plate uh, less than a year after we opened Hoboken. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. I was not even thinking about expanding at that time. I did not have you know, one full year to, to understand, to look at what I had done and where we were. So it was, uh, it was really pushed to me. And, and we look at the market and we say, yes, why not? I think it's a good opportunity. And then after that, I, I turned down some opportunities. Uh, so others came to me, but it was not the right place, so it was not the right time. And I was, uh, and I actually spent three years on building the production facility on Palisade Avenue in Jersey City. So that was the first, the second time after the first one that I was actually actively looking for a space. And I spent a lot of time in looking for different spaces, negotiating, and then building it out. And T building came also like on a plate. Like s someone who was living inside the building contacted me and said, "Hey, this space is, is empty. You should you should take it. It's it's a great opportunity." And I was like, "Yeah, but wait a minute. I mean, Palisade is not open yet. I mean, I'm yeah. Okay, let's do this." <laughs> <laughs> so it was. Uh, it's really a, about opportunities most of the time. I mean, and sometimes, like like you said, you you become more organized and then you start looking for something mm -hmm. by yourself, so it really depends. I'm hearing though, kind of a common theme that it's a little uncomfortable each time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yes. a little unknown. As you're trying to do it, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. and very unknown. That's right. 